let me start with my introduction a little bit. Uh, so I lead uh, or I head the data and AI governance with Infosys. Um, and as a practice, I have been leading this from last 10 years. I have 20 plus years of experience entirely into data and analytics. And uh, we have been as an Infosys, we have been working on AI first since 2015. And uh, AI governance as part of data governance, we have been working on from last one year. So that's, that's like kind of introduction. Now, to start with the session. So I'm sure that um, most, a lot of people are living in hotel right now, hotel rooms. And if you have to get up during the night, definitely you might not be in dark, you might not be comfortable and you might switch on your lights. But same is the same is not the case with in your bedrooms. And the reason is simple, because you know in your bedroom where things are kept. So basically it's all about knowledge. And that's where the key message or let me summarize that what is that you're going to see during this particular session. And the session is like uncovering whatever is not known as part of AI. So today, basically the problem is, or most of the organizations facing a challenge that yes, they want to invest in AI, they want to work in AI, but the challenge is that they really don't know that what uh, problems they might encounter with in, in future. And that's where actually, if the, the key message or the summary out of this session you can take out is that if you know better in terms of what models, how the models are behaving under regulations with, re with respect to privacy regulations or say compliances, plus how to trust, how to build the trust, how to build ethics and what are the different characteristics are there. So all those things, if you know, then it is easy to uh, sustain any challenges or problems which is there as part of the AI or AI initiatives or AI applications. And that's what is something you will see. Now, today's session basically, and now another metaphor, typically, um, let me uh, give another metaphor. Um, countries build bombs and missiles. And definitely, they say that there is certain value they are bringing in and value in terms of like uh, safeguarding their people, and if they safeguard their people, uh, they will flourish in their countries. And uh, they say that, okay, economy grows and then, of course, uh, prosperity. So that's what the value is being said. But if you think from a responsibility perspective, is it responsible enough? If I have to put check mark, it will be a cross. So basically, it's not a responsible thing to actually build missiles or bombs and same is the case with goes with AI. So when AI, any AI initiative or say any AI um, uh, use cases are built, basically two things has to be checked. One is definitely the value part and the second is whether it is responsible enough to take care of the actual requirement of what has to be done. And that's where actually I'll be talking about the guided innovation uh, with responsible by design and then a framework associated to it. So let's move on. So I think I just uh, touched upon the challenges part. I touched upon how to, uh, how to overcome challenges. I'll, I'll talk about it. And then of course, over the uh, next few minutes, you will see that how to govern AI. Now, I'm sure that as part of Databricks, a lot of conversations, Unity Catalog came into picture and like we are talking about data governance a lot. And you will see certain things which is like overlapping kind of things and that's where is the starting point. So to start with, now we all know, any organization we are working with, all organizations has intention to work on AI. 50%, more than 50% of the organizations, bare minimum, they have at least one AI initiative they might have worked till today. And if we have to think next one year, the kind of investments, what we see basically, those investments will be around, uh, huge investments might be there. And just, I want to bring up one particular thing here. 100 years back when electricity actually came in, at that point of time, the productivity increased immensely. And a lot of investments were made. 50 years later, 
I mean to say 50 years before, uh, before today, uh, computers were introduced to the businesses. And that's where again the productivity levels went up significantly and a lot of investments were made. And now this is the time that AI comes in picture and then AI actually takes it to the next level. And we are seeing that two years back, in our families, nobody knew about Copilot and ChatGPT. Now, we are planning our vacations on Copilot and ChatGPT. And that's what is the change. And, the, and we will see that these changes will impact in our lives over the period of time very quickly. And that's where we see that a lot of investments will be there. Lot of, a big market we are going to see. And everybody of us who is sitting here is going to get impacting impacted either by using AI applications or will be working on AI applications in whatever form, that's a different thing. So let's move on. So now the thing is, what are the concerns? Now concerns, I clearly from any AI initiative, there are three areas are there. Very simple three areas, data, model, and the usage or consumption part. So from a data perspective, we know your model is as good as your data is, right? And then from a model perspective, if you see, models has become a black boxes now. And more and more you will see over the period of time, there are players who will be coming and saying that, okay, I have like 10,000 models available. You just think about your use case, identify a model, or we will tell you which model fits you best and you just take it. But the problem is that how that, is that model transparent enough? Are you able to trace any issues which are there, will you, will it, is it explainable? Answer probably yes, answer they will say yes, but you just have to believe it. But that's where is the black box, we, I say that it's a black box or the models are black box. And the finally, uh, the usage, the patterns, if say there are two individuals asking the same question to the AI, uh, say a chatbot, what's the guarantee that uh, the chatbot is responding the same answer for a sing same question to two different individuals or same individual at two different times. And that's where is the, is the, is some, some governance is required. Now, how to, how to overcome these challenges? And it's very simple. If we look at, there are five principles we have to just follow. Trust, ethics, privacy, compliance, and security. And I think privacy is, privacy, security, and compliance is from a data perspective, any which ways we are managing it. But from a trust and ethics perspective, and that's where certain characteristics are there. So we are just not talking about like trust and ethics in the air. There are certain characteristics are there. And these characteristics, basically, we need to bring in through various different capabilities that, say for an example, if I'm just talking about accurate, okay, accuracy of data we are talking about. If we are talking about explainable, we are talking about like say the traceability part. I mean to say uh, uh, simple from a data world perspective, if we have to think about data lineage. Now uh, reproducible, I was just talking about an example that same question asked two different individuals, same question asked a uh, single individual at multiple different time, uh, point of time giving same answer, that's reproducibility. And the accountability. Who is accountable? If something goes wrong, is the model owner, the person who has created that model, is he the own, uh, owns of the responsibility? Or the data which is on, based on which the model is running, the data owner is taking the accountability. Who is taking accountability? The moment we are talking about accountability and that's where the trust is built. Same is the case with ethics. Say, uh, we, know, we understand that uh, as a human being, I'll be, I'll be all, there might be certain biases might be there. But those biases might just translate into uh, AI uh, initiatives as well or any AI application as well. How do we manage that? So that's where basically there are certain different capabilities are there which can manage the bias part. And that's where, that's where we see that these characteristics of uh, being fair and impartial or uh, human overriding basically if any uh, AI application is taking a decision which is probably not right from a responsibility perspective a human override is definitely needed there and then coming to the privacy part I think privacy from a data privacy perspective the same 
uh, same principles apply to the model as well from a security perspective and a compliance perspective also. So, so if you look at all these characteristics, just we have to follow on the characteristics and I think that's it. That's it. Nothing more than we have to do. Only thing is for these characteristics, we have to identify certain capabilities. Now, I'm just moving on. So, <clears throat> we have seen this. So, the guiding principles, the governance characteristics. Now, where to start with? I'm sure a lot of people from, if, if you, you have seen data governance, uh, uh, in data governance also, the AI governance organizations has to be built. And when we say AI governance organization, we are talking about like somebody who should take the responsibility or accountability. And that's where it's important that we should have very defined set of roles in the organization. And that cannot sit with the people who are building models. It has to be over and above uh, the people who are building models. And that's where the policies and standards has to be defined. Uh, over the period of time when model starts or gets into production, the monitoring part should happen where the KPIs and the KPIs we have to uh, create and there, there should be certain measures to monitor those particular uh, usage of uh, those AI uh, applications. And then, of course, over the period of time, tools and technology should come in picture, which, which definitely through framework, you will be able to figure out. The moment I'll talk about capability, you will be able to imagine that what tools and technology basically is required. Now, how, what is the approach? Of course, we identify, identify from an organization perspective, what are the roles, what is the responsibility to be played. Uh, from policies perspective, you identify first, then you define, and then you start implementing it. And over the period of time, the same policies will define uh, how, you, how do you, over the period of time, you, you, from a usage perspective, how do you use policies and standards. And the same is the case, uh, it goes for KPIs and measures, and as well as the tools and technology. You identify, you use, uh, define the operating model, you implement it, and over the period of time, you monitor. So, and then this is across all different data types. And then if you look at the governance layers, all the governance, all we were, we are talking about till now, we, we have been knowing data governance, but now it's not only data, but also the model and the uses, usage and consumption from the model. So all three layers basically need to be governed. So this is a framework, maybe this is some a framework which probably you can uh, use in your organizations and that's where actually we come to help. Now, this is a kind of a solution blueprint. Now, if you look at the right side, basically the governance enablement. So these enablement we have seen as part of data governance. There are certain pieces at the bottom, change management and training and development. Definitely those things are required over the period of time moment AI initiatives comes in picture, a lot of AI initiatives, basically, you need to uh, communicate the change, you need to train the people how to utilize those um, uh, AI initiatives. And of course, policies we talked about. Now, to start with, there are four different layers are there. One is organize and fingerprint. So basically, we are talking about data catalog, uh, model catalog, we are talking about tagging, classification. So basically, not only tagging classification of your data, but also it requires for model as well. And then if we are talking about integrated control functions, security and quality. So basically uh, qu data quality we know, which exists, already existing. Now think in this way, uh, I was talking about bias. Now why don't you in include bias as part of data quality itself? Bias management. So you identify the bias while you are profiling the data, you also start identifying the what is the bias in the data itself because the same data will be used by the models also. Now, similar case if from a security perspective, we know that the encryptions and uh, access controls we are putting on data. Why not the same thing on models as well, the access control? So not everybody or not uh, um, uh, the models ideally should not access uh, a, all data, but it, it should be it should be dependent on uh, that particular model, who is running that particular model, which application is running but that particular model, depending on that, the access of data should be there. So, and that's where the access control of models comes into picture. And then uh, over the period of time, so uh, we, we know that 
uh, we have built a lot of privacy and regula re regulatory requirements as part of, of data privacy. And we are talking about data subject access request, uh, PII classification. So all those things, again, the same thing, same concepts, basically on models as well need to be implemented. And over the period of time, we have been building like data marketplace kind of uh, uh, functionalities. Now, if data marketplace is driven by, say, AI, then the same concepts on data marketplace, like say, human overriding, if I have to do a human override, need to be done on data marketplace, where if, if, if it is giving a certain uh, data marketplace is giving certain results, if those results has to be overridden, then definitely a human overriding has to be uh, created. So, so this is a framework. Now, there are more than 40 capabilities we have identified. I'm repeating, we have identified 40 different capabilities for each of the boxes what you see in this. Now, these are at, at, at a very high level. I didn't want it to just bring in those details here. Definitely, we have details. So, say for an example, smart data and model quality management. There are at least 20 capabilities are there, which includes your data profiling, data quality management, uh, model profiling, uh, then uh, bias management, bias management as part of data, bias management as part of model. So there are multiple such capabilities are there. Same is the case with organized and fingerprinting. So multiple, I, I spoke about the capabilities. So there are 40, uh, 40 plus capabilities are there, which probably we can bring in. Now, if you have to start in your organization, the three priority areas, so these are the three priority areas. All initiatives, you need to document it. And for those initiatives, you need to have a defined mechanism and control. Now, those initiatives, there will be a life cycle of that particular initiative will be there. Starting from uh, onboarding, then you review it, then uh, you over the period of time, you update it. And then finally, maybe you would like to monitor those initiatives. Now, Coming to the second second one, which is related to the data, definitely uh, uh, from a, any particular AI model, definitely needs data to be prepared and a training data need to be prepared. And that's where basically uh, you have to start working on making your data ready for the models. And then finally, the models, basically these models, uh, you need to catalog, you need to classify the models, you need to uh, tag the models, you need to have all information available, all metadata information available for the models as well, the way you, you do a metadata management for your data. And that's where, that's where typically these are the three typical priority areas any organization can start. And I think this is very doable. It doesn't require like a complex set of tools, the tools what you have with you, Probably from a data governance perspective, you can use those particular tools. Now, what is our experience from an Infosys perspective? Data and AI governance, overall data governance, if we talk, if I have to talk about, I've executed 100 plus programs in last 10 years, my team. 500 plus consultants are there and we have experience of 10 plus years of experience. And, and uh, with AI governance, now we have already started working with some of our clients on AI governance and we are helping them build AI governance. So yeah, so I'll just, you can reach out to me. My email ID is there in case if you need to ask any questions. And I think we are, I think almost on the time. So if you have any questions, I'm available on 116 booth. Please come to the booth and me and my more colleagues will be there who can help you out.